Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. This is going to be my Blu-ray haul for the end of July, which means that August is about to start, which is scary because July flew by faster than pretty much any month in my life. I went to California to visit my friend Trevor from Film Geeks. I was down in Florida. I just got back from South Carolina. So I've been all over the place traveling. So I haven't had time to buy a lot of Blu-rays, but I still got this stack right here and about four Funko Pops to show, so I'm very excited to get into those. Before I do that, definitely hit the like button, comment everything you picked up in the month of July down below, especially Criterions. I got two of them right here to talk about, which I'm very excited to talk about, but thank you all for watching. Again, hit that subscribe button and bell notifications so don't miss out on any future videos, Blu-ray hauls, all that good stuff, but this is gonna be a very laid back video, not a lot of editing, just chilled, talking about some Steelbooks, a regular Blu-ray, some Criterions and some Funko Pops. So without further ado, I'll show you guys the regular Blu-ray first. You may have seen some of these in Blu-ray hunts that I did throughout the month, but there's a few surprises in here, I think. I mean, I try to leave at least one for the end of the month. So the first movie is gonna be Point Break. Blip. I wanna say Point Break. Break is not a word, I don't think, but Point Break. See, I did it again. Point Break, Point Break, Point Break, Point Break. I can't say that one five times fast. I would fail that test. Point Break, there we go, with Keanu Reeves, and Patrick Swayze. Uh, this is a classic 90s action movie, hella cheesy at times, I'm gonna be honest with you, there's a lot of cheesy aspects to it, but I think that it's a lot of fun. It's almost a great heist movie too, you see on the back the president, ex-presidents, and then there's a bunch of enthralling, adrenaline-inducing scenes, my eyes twitching, hold on. Gary Busey's character is over the top. Utah, give me two. There's just a lot of great one-liners too. So if you haven't seen this, do yourself a favor and check it out. I can't speak to the quality of the 2015, 2015 remake, I want to say. Point Break, the remake. I haven't seen it, so I can't tell you if it's good or not. Um, but I do have two Criterions I want to show you guys. I have seen one of these movies. I have not seen the other one. The first one is The Man Who Knew Too Much, the 1934, yeah, 1934 edition. That's Peter Larray, I want to say is his name. Um, and he gives a performance that by today's standards would still be considered phenomenal. I think that he should have been nominated for an Oscar. Was he? I don't know. I didn't do my research before I started filming. But I think that this movie is actually solid. It's only 75 minutes long. And I thought it was going to be the 1956 version with James Stewart or Jimmy Stewart, whatever you want to call him, when I bought the movie. So I was kind of disappointed when I found out it wasn't. I was like, oh man, should I sell it? Do I need to watch it? But I threw it on anyway and I gave it a chance and I was very pleased with it. It's very confined. It's almost like... Um, a very simple story. I understand why Hitchcock remade the movie just to see if he can make it a little more grandiose and I'm sure he did. I'm still trying to find a way to watch that 1956 version but I'm very pleased with this. I don't plan on selling it. Um, I may or may not watch it again though just because if I like the, the remake better I'll probably just want to own that one and um, watch that one in the future but I'm not mad that I watched it. Uh, the next movie I'm disappointed to say I have not watched yet. I have been very busy in July so I haven't sat down and watched it. That is Pan's Labyrinth uh, from Guillermo del Toro. I've never seen a del Toro movie fun fact and um, this it just called to my name. Um, Pan's Labyrinth has got a great cover. It's like a fantasy type adventure movie I think. Uh, Josh from Cinecreep was highly recommending this one. I blind bought it and I don't usually do that. I know a bunch of people guide the movies podcast said that it's worth checking out so it's about two hours long, came out in 2006, and I think, did this win the Oscar for best like foreign film? But I'm excited to check this one out. Maybe I'll do a reaction video or first time watch video or give like a review of it. I'll also definitely talk about it on Letterboxd when I do watch it. I wanna give it the time of day soon. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later because I want to get a video out for that and just see a movie that I haven't seen. Um, next up, I got two steelbooks. One of them is for one of my, it's in my top 10 of the year. And again, I've seen about 17, 18 movies at this point in time. So it's still in my top 10. That is Spiral from the Book of Saw. I'm a big Saw fan. Uh, the first one is one of, if not my favorite horror movies of all time. And the whole franchise, I've seen them all. They are very bad movies once you start to get further into them. But they're guilty pleasure movies because they're fun to make fun of, but also kind of enthralling in a way and kind of like I want to see how they're going to get out of the trap do they even get out of the trap it's something weird maybe I'm just messed up but the cool thing about this is there's like a slip cover to the steelbook so if you take this off it's just like that and then you've got the back right there with Chris Rock on the front and back Spiral I think is the second best Saw movie now there's a lot of Saw purists who will say the trilogy is the best Saw 2 and 3 are great and all this stuff and to that I say Saw 2 and 3 aren't that good Saw 2 maybe better than Spiral when, when I first really sat down and think about it. I just loved um, the 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 new direction, the fact that it didn't rely on Jigsaw. It didn't rely on these stupid um, traps that were just over-the-top gory just to be gory. 
I felt like there was a lot more of the detective side of things with this one, especially with him and his relationship with Samuel L. Jackson's character. So I liked seeing that side of things. It almost felt more like an actual film than just like a gore fest, which is what the, some of the Saw sequels became. So I think it was pretty clever. The twist, in my opinion, was well done. Hindsight bias, of course, it was kind of obvious at times. And there was one moment where I was like a little sus. I was like, okay, that is a little too on the nose. Maybe something's up with that character. And again, they kind of rushed through a certain death as well, where I was like, okay, there's no way that character's really dead. If you see the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But Spiral from the Book of Saw, I'm not a crazy big fan of the steel book. It is growing on me. The 4K cover is atrocious for this. I genuinely think it's disgusting. It's like neon yellow and all this crap. But the slip cover wins. The Blu-ray slip cover wins. It was just the poster. I love that poster. It's actually one of my favorite movie posters of the year, if not my favorite. Um, really great poster for that movie. I would, I would like to have that poster. If anyone knows if I could get my hands on it, Definitely message or comment, message me or comment down below and let me know. Uh, but I just picked this movie. This is my last movie of a haul, and I got four Funko Pops. This is a gorgeous steelbook for A Quiet Place Part Two. Look at that thing. It is red, and I love red. Red and black are like my favorite colors. You got them walking on the sand path, and on the back you've got the woods, and you've got them walking again. And if you open it up, you've got the 4K and the Blu-ray, and then some glorious artwork in there. This is like how you do a steelbook, and I think they did a damn good job with the first one as well because I have the Quiet Place the first one steelbook and this so now they can look glorious in their red and black uh, next to each other on the shelf and I'm a, I'm a happy man I'm a very happy man <laughs> this is my favorite movie of the year I think that the opening 10 minutes are riveting when I went and saw Black Widow they actually got something wrong so they started playing a quiet place part two at the beginning and I wasn't mad I was like I kind of want to go watch that now because it was my second time watching Black Widow but a quiet place Two again it's riveting it's intense as hell there's like a 30 minute sequence where I was barely even breathing because it was so freaking intense. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But this is damn good horror sequel, and I uh, highly recommend this one. It's my favorite movie of the year for a reason. It's just, it's great stuff. I'm a little, if I have to nitpick the movie, I wish the ending was done a little differently. But again, that's a tiny nitpick at the end of the day. But I do have some Funko Pops now. Those are the only movies I picked up. Um, Marvel fans, you'll be happy. I know that a lot of you out there, including, I mean, if you can tell, MCU galore, right? But... I'll go ahead and show you guys what I got. So the first one is going to be Bucky, or the Winter Soldier from Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, this is in, I believe, what he wears in Madripoor, I want to say. If you look right there, it looks kind of off color from the actual way it is in the movie. But you can see the arm glistening, just the classic pose. Bucky is a great character in the MCU who's grown on me quite a bit. I actually do like this character. He's my favorite in the entire show. Sam Wilson, aka Captain America, is a badass too. Um, but, you know, Bucky's grown on me. And then I got this pop because Black Widow came out, and this is one of the best characters in Black Widow, Red Guardian. I have no idea. I absolutely love uh, David Harbour as an actor, especially as Hopper in Stranger Things. So seeing him have so much fun in the role of Red Guardian, it was just a hilarious side character. Um, he actually had some heartfelt moments with Florence Pugh, uh, Yelena, and as well as Nat and, and Melina, all these characters. So Red Guardian's a badass. I hope we get like a show with Red Guardian, maybe like a, a flashback prequel show or even a current day show. We need to see more David Harbour in the MCU. You don't sign a guy like David Harbour on for nothing, in my opinion, and it's just such a cool design as well. So expect to see this one in the background very soon. Um, I almost got Yelena, but Cam has Yelena, so it was kind of like... Um, we're probably going to combine our collections eventually, so it's um, nowadays we're kind of like splitting the sets. That way we're not going crazy individually. Next, I got this pop when I went out to Disneyland, so I've already shown it to you in a haul video from Disneyland, but that is going to be Spider-Man from the Web Slinger ride. As you can see, he's got one of the spider bots there, and he's web slinging, you know, kind of like the name of the ride, but I like this one quite a bit. I put it in a pop protector just because I think it's cool. Um, maybe I'll put this next one in a pop protector, though, because this is the coolest Funko Pop I own possibly, and I really probably should put it in a pop protector. And this is going to be from Captain America the Winter Soldier, the Year of the Shield, Bucky Barnes Winter Soldier pop, where he catches the shield that Cap, when him, it's during the highway fight scene between him and Cap when he gets the shield. You can see that detail right there. It's very much, very like weathered down and beaten up, just like it is in the movie. The mask is good. Just that's a perfect pop, in my opinion. That is a perfect Funko pop. And they need to do more exclusives like this, especially for, you know, Iron Man, even though they, I have Iron Man and Thor behind me, I would love to see more just detailed pops from older movies. Like, do some Indiana Jones ones that are affordable because the current ones, the Comic-Con ones, are insanely expensive. But I love this pop. I need to put it up behind me. 
In fact, I may do that after I film this video, time will tell. But those are all the movies, Blu-rays, Steelbooks, and Funko Pops that I picked up in the month of July. I usually go a little bit harder in July, but I was busy traveling and all this stuff. But I'm still happy with everything that I picked up. Thank you all so much for watching. The support lately has been awesome. You were the best. Again, I love doing these Blu-ray videos, but if you like the Blu-ray videos, definitely check out some of my other stuff. I do movie reviews, rankings, vlogs, watch parties, a ton of different stuff. Feel free to check all that out. Trailer reactions, of course. Um, but I appreciate every single one of you for being here in the film stock community. It's crazy that I started this channel in 2019 and it's been over two years. So we're almost to 3K subs. So if you guys are watching, definitely hit that subscribe button. It would help out. Let me know in the comments what you picked up this month. It's always fun for me to have that conversation with you guys about what you're picking up because I think we should keep physical media alive, even though streaming is tempting at times. It's kind of a continuous inner battle that I have. There will be more Blu-ray videos eventually on my channel. But thank you all for watching. Until next time, see you guys later. Thank you.